Okay, so I went ahead and taped up uh, you know, the baseboards and the sidewall here. I left a small gap because I'm going to put quarter on there anyway, so just really want to make sure that the brush isn't going to get too far on the wall. So and I also taped up around my beams at the top, uh, but I'll just be putting on just a cheap old can of white paint um, to go behind my shiplap. I forgot to buy a drop cloth, so I had some extra leaf bags. So for this tiny area, I think this will work. So I've shaken the uh, paint can. I'm going to go ahead and pour it in here and uh, get that coat of white paint on. Okay, so I have the wall painted. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I didn't even do the top or the bottom edges because the wood's going to cover it. So the point here is just so you have a nice white uh, behind the wood whenever you have those little, uh, the spacing. So the nickel, I'm going to be using a nickel for spacing. So again, kind of splotchy, but again, it's just up there. So I'm going to let this dry for uh, about an hour, and then I'm going to go ahead and mark the studs on the wall. All right, next up, you're going to mark the studs on your wall. So I bought this uh, stud finder. It's like 11 bucks at Lowe's. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you how that works. So you're going to mark that edge. Then you're going to go to the other side. Let it cal calibrate. And then you're going to mark the other edge. So that's essentially what it's going to look like. So you're going to have your stud. Typically studs are 16 to 24 inches apart. Um, so what I did is I went ahead and marked the studs at the top. I figured I just marked it for the first board, and then I'll just follow the nail line uh, coming down. So we have some spackling, or you can use wood, putty, uh, whatever you prefer. So I am just inching a little off at a time and filling those holes. I'll be going back for some of the spots and sanding them. Progress on the wall is looking good. So we got most of the pieces cut last night um, and put them up. Lots of nail holes to plug. We had some issues with the nail gun. We basically had to do it twice. Um, so both sides here. We just have a few more planks to put on tonight. The wall is officially ready to be painted. So I had filled in all the nail holes. I let it dry on the wood filler and then I sanded it all down. So the wall is officially ready to paint. Uh, I did go ahead and get Sherwin-Williams alabaster uh, in flat or matte finish. Um, so once I get this painted, we'll see how the finished product looks. Uh, and then we went ahead and also got um, some quarter round from Lowe's. We'll be putting that up in the corner. And the one I got was the 105, quarter round 105, if you can see that. So that should look really nice up in the corners here. So just giving it that nice finished look all the way around. So I got a new roller. This is ideal for walls and ceilings, for smooth surfaces. Um, got a paintbrush for any tricky areas. And then I went ahead and got Sherwin-Williams. Uh, I settled on the alabaster color so a very popular color for years uh, I liked it because it's not like a bright white um, but it's not too creamy uh, so we'll see how this uh, turns out a nice even amount on the paint roller not too much excess
first side of the wall done. So that Sherwin Williams paint it's supposed to be one coat guarantee. Paint and primer one worked really well. Um, it's pretty thick paint. So I mean, as I went through, there's a couple splotches. So I went back over. But for the most part, very easy. Um, so a couple tips. Definitely put the paint on very light or a light on your roller. Like don't um, soak your roller in it because then you're going to get more paint in the seams. So definitely roll your um, roller in the paint and then give it a few little you know, kind of rinses here so it's evenly spread out. Again, don't soak too much on it. It makes it a lot easier to apply. Now, if you do get a paint drip in your seams, I was just using a, a Q-tip, or Q-tip, sorry, a toothpick. So just put the toothpick in there, run it along, get those little paint drips out.